Why are Nigerian elections already violent? This is a question I can't get out of my head. Today we are going to look at the cause of this issue and a possible solution to this problem. Since Nigeria's independence in 1960, Nigerians' electoral history and democratic process have always been marred by violence. There is always a rise in violence in the country right before, during, and after the elections. There is no single cause for the violence. It can be shaped to eliminate or weaken the impact of rival forces. It can also be used to protest defeats or sabotage retreats by demoralizing the opposition's ability to rally their base and do well at the polls. One more may be an attempt to influence the outcome of elections or undermine their legitimacy. Attacks, robberies, assault, assassinations, kidnappings, and bombing are all part of their arsenal. In Nigeria, politics is the most lucrative industry, and everything is on the line. To gain access to the wealth of a country, one must first gain access to the position of authority within the government. Sometimes the losers lose everything, including their supporters, money, and reputation. As a result, Political actors often resort to violent means to attain their goals. Electoral officials can easily be pressured or manipulated. There have been numerous claims of election or security agency misconduct in the past, usually at the behest of one political party. As a result, some political actors have turned to armed non-state groups for help. There are occasions when these organizations compete with or even actively of both state entities. Many Nigerians feel helpless in the face of the country's current economic, social, and political climate. Poverty, inequality, perceived unfairness, illiteracy, youth unemployment, hunger, corruption, human rights abuse, and insecurity all contribute to people feeling helpless and powerless. It is well documented that politicians and their paid operatives have engaged in violent acts against their opponents and their supporters. This can be done either directly by organizing talks or indirectly by spreading hate speech and inciting violence against their opponents. Cases of state violence have also been documented. This has occurred in the past, whenever police or soldiers have been used in an unjustly repressive manner. The presence of security forces is not always obvious. There have been whispers about security forces conducting covert missions in opposition areas on behalf of the ruling parties. For instance, during the 2015 election, it was claimed that unidentified military troops stormed an opposition stronghold in the state of Edo, and she participating and armed non-state actors like insurgents, terrorists, bandits, political thugs, cultists, and gangs. To guarantee a smooth election, it is essential that all parties involved cooperate. To do this, both state and non-state actors, as well as external partners, we need to put in some efforts. The primary obligation falls on Nigerian central government. It needs to consider both the root causes and motivation for the violence. Political and police actions will need to be combined, as there is no one side fits all answer. There also needs to be more work done to strengthen the capabilities of key institutions. Voting and security departments stands out as two of the most important. When it comes to reducing electoral violence in Nigeria, the country's electoral authority plays a vital role. Elections and party activity regulation must be in accordance with national laws and guidelines, and its operation ought to be open and honest. The military should not be involved in election security. It is necessary to strike a balance between the rule of law and respect for human rights during elections. Nevertheless, the armed forces may play a supportive role in policing. Suspects should be apprehended, tried, and given justice free of political interference. Election violence can be prevented by law in Nigeria. It is imperative that these laws be put into effect and strictly enforced. The committee ought to advocate for public education via both conventional and alternative media. The media, civil society organizations, and political parties all have significant impacts in shaping public opinion and galvanizing communities. Members and supporters of political parties that engage in electoral violence should be investigated and, if necessary, condemned and furnished. 
The natural process needs to be more accountable and transparent, and civil society organizations need to be educated and mobilize the public to make that happen. It is the duty of the media, especially of the more conventional variety, to report the news fairly and with. Last but not least, it is essential to release the help of developed democracies to fortify institutions like the government, NGOs, and the security forces. Even the media, the way we go about the elections in this country, makes political positions creative and putting a stop to this will help solve the election violence which against every election cycle. Thanks for watching. Comment and like below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more on people and politics.